In Hastings, Zach Markere works in suicide prevention. He runs the Tetaitimu Trust, which organises events for Rangatahi on the East Coast. Zach was inspired to set up the trust after his teenage son Kelly took his life 18 years ago today. My wife and I were freezer workers. We didn't have the knowledge to understand what pain looked like. So in 2007, we decided we would open up a trust, a Taitimu Trust, and that was really to develop our capacity as a whānau to support others. Zach's Te Taitimu Trust encourages Rangatahi to be open about their feelings. Some of the issues I think is really about us being able to teach our kids how to deal with their emotions. In the old days, you know, 30 years ago, it was the old story, hearten up, move on. Uh, we, we're not teaching them how to deal with their emotions. I know one of those. I know that, that person, I was that person. But, you know, if I was coached on how to deal with things like anger and violence, I probably wouldn't have been that person. The government says it will spend hundreds of millions of dollars on mental health services and has already expanded a programme that places mental health nurses in high schools and launched a pilot to make mental health care free for 18 to 25 year olds. Other than that, little new money has been committed yet. Instead, the government is waiting on the results of its mental health inquiry, which has been running all year. It's a major focus because New Zealand has one of the highest suicide rates in the developed world. Zach says it doesn't have to be that way. Just rocking up and say, well, you, you know, here's a prescription, go away, this will help. You've got to have more of a personal approach, you know. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's an Asian culture. It's a cultural thing for us. Kiwis, Māori, Kiwis, you know, the hard nups uh, scenario. We talk really well about how we play a rugby game. A few beers. We've scored three tries now. Aye. And we, there's so many more people dropped off the tackles that they tried to make on us. So we talk about how well we do things, but we don't really talk about um, things that aren't going well in our lives. If we could talk about our triumphs, that's awesome. But if we could teach our kids and our families how to talk about the burdens in life, that would really, really help. Southlanders have a reputation for being deeply stoic. We've travelled to Invercargill to meet councillor Caroline Liu to find out if that's actually the case and hear how she thinks the government can best support the region. Caroline's Loss and Grief Centre provides mental health counselling. The centre came about because we went through our own personal tragedy with our daughter Sarah dying and I went through some really deep significant grief and went looking for help and a lot of the help that was offered was at quite a clinical level and I knew I didn't need that, I needed someone I could talk to. And so through a process of four or five years, this idea was birthed from the community that this is what would make a difference. And for me, I knew it would make a difference. Obviously people have made a conscious decision to come here and to speak to you and to open up. But at the same time, do you find that Southlanders can find it difficult talking about their emotions and feelings? Yeah, lots of people said to me before we started this, nobody will come. But I knew that I would have. I might have walked up and down the street maybe 10 times before I got the confidence to come in, but I knew that at the breaking point that I was at, I needed someone to talk to who understood. So although that might be what people say, that's actually not my reality and it's not what we've experienced here. In the first few weeks, I could not believe how many people came through the door. Some people were just being nosy, which was fine, but people were like they had waited and they'd bottled stuff up for years. And they came in, they had a 45 minute conversation and they went out and things were better. Um, this year alone, we've had over 2,000 requests for support or inquiries or people walk through the door. Caroline introduced us to Lindsay Wright, a fourth generation farmer who now works for Southland Rural Support. 
After 24 years running a farm, Lindsay gave it up during a painful period of his life. All of a sudden in 2001, two, everything just came really, really good. It was sweet. Prices of lamb had gone up. You know, good lambs were getting close to $100 a lamb. And it was just the best job ever. And what I hadn't realised was just that the prices had got away above the average gain line for, for prices. And within four years, I found myself sitting in my truck in a black hole in the middle of my paddock, wondering what on earth to do, uh, because the prices started coming back uh, and back and back. And as well as that, I had kids going to high school and things like that, and I just couldn't make ends meet. Did you consider yourself depressed? Because of the stigma, I think, that goes around the word depression, I felt that I didn't think I was, and I can remember consciously trying to justify myself that I wasn't. And in my head, I can remember thinking, am I depressed? I don't think I am because I'm a moderately intelligent sort of person. And I'm sitting here thinking about whether I'm depressed or not. And if I'm having that kind of rational conversation with myself, then I can't be depressed, so therefore I'm not. And all of that was just a, an excuse for me to try and uh, prove to myself that there was nothing wrong when really there was. That day that I came to a stop in the middle of the paddock, I just knew I had to talk to somebody about it. So I ended up ringing a counsellor and got an appointment. Fortunately, I managed to get in the next day. And just because I'd done that, I kind of felt that I was back in control because I was doing something about it. I walked into that counselling room sat down, feeling pretty clever about what I was doing, and, and the counsellor just said to me, so you've got some problems? And I said, and that's as far as I got, I didn't even get the, the yes out, and I just broke, because that was the first time ever I'd said to anybody, I've got some problems that I just don't know how to deal with. And all the time up to that, people would say, how are you going? Good. And, and you just end up lying. And, and I, I couldn't stand lying anymore and, be, and saying I was good, so I started saying to people, I'm battling on. Zach, Lindsay and Caroline all talk about encouraging people to open up and making sure there's someone to listen. So, has the government listened this year? And what does Caroline hope it's heard? From a policy level, um, a government that understands that mental health is an ongoing priority and it's not a short-term fix, so to make sure there are parameters that don't just think that after a year we would have solved all the problems. Um, on a logistical, on the down on earth, here with me level, I think um, all the early intervention services like the Southern Rural Trust, like us, that actually have to work hard to seek for funding should be given some injection of funding. Mm -hmm.